Art Rocks is made possible by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and by viewers like you. Hello and thank you for being part of Art Rocks with me, James Fox Smith, publisher of Country Roads Magazine. If you have set foot in downtown Baton Rouge or explored the campus of Southern University, chances are you've laid eyes on the work of sculptor Frank Hayden. But these pieces only represent a fraction of Hayden's creative output. The Louisiana Art and Science Museum assembled the largest collection ever of Hayden's work. And with the help of artist Morris Taft Thomas and others, we've been able to bear witness to Hayden's life and work. significant Louisiana artists and sculptors of the 20th century. Artistic concerns have uh, always interested me. I guess the uh, concern for aesthetics. When you look around this exhibition, it is very obvious that Frank Hayden favored wood as his preferred medium, Honduran mahogany especially, because it's got this beautiful, deep, rich red-brown color and very natural variations in the grain that are just stunning when they are carved. He's got this beautiful way of working with wood and in some pieces and earlier pieces you see a slightly rougher finish, a slightly grittier finish, but when he went to Europe after his Fulbright Fellowship, I believe it was in 1968, he studied Scandinavian art and discovered the Scandinavian woodworking tradition and those sleek designs of their modern style. And especially in his later works, specifically 1986, those works are smooth and they are modern, sleek designs. He also worked in stone and in plaster and of course that bronze, that cast bronze. What's interesting is that he also worked in fiberglass. Fiberglass may seem like an odd choice, but you have to remember that it was a new material in the 70s. And so Frank Hayden was working with this new exciting material using these same techniques to make new sculptures. And it's not unusual for artists to work in many mediums and to dabble in something new or something interesting or to revisit a medium that they have in the past abandoned for whatever it suits their needs. If they want something large and powerful, maybe bronze, or perhaps that's cost prohibitive, and so wood is the great way to get the effect. I don't think necessarily every artist is that adept at being so skilled with every medium. Frank Hayden obviously was one of those rare talented individuals. And it takes time and dedication and practice, and it's obvious that Frank Hayden was putting in those hours and developing those skills. Hayden considered himself a Catholic artist, was a devout practitioner for his entire life, spent many times at mass in the church and created many commissions for both the diocese as a whole and also individual churches. And he was a humanist, believed in the united struggles of men and often found stories from the Christian Bible to be the best way to express these issues. We see a lot of Christianity sprinkled into Frank Hayden's work, either touched on or as the primary subject. One beautiful piece that we have in this exhibition is called Pillar of Salt. And in it, we have three women walking forward, carved in wood, and one woman turning back, and she is cast in stone. And that is Lot's wife, looking back, turning to the Pillar of Salt. Uh, we also have Joseph and his coat of many colors. What's especially wonderful about that piece is that it's carved in wood, so it's not colorful. But what Frank Hayden has done, in addition to making this biblical story, was to give us reference to 
African tribal textiles. These beautiful textile patterns are carved into the coat and it relates two sides of him, this African-American man and this Catholic man, both coming together in one sculpture. Hayden was born in 1934, was a young man in the 1950s and the 1960s, in the Jim Crow era and in the South. These were issues that were part of his daily life that he battled in every aspect. It of course came through in his art. What is so interesting is that we're revisiting these same issues. One of my favorite pieces is called 16 Men Make a Rod. And in that work, we see what appears to be a group of men standing in a line. But when you look closely, you'll notice that each man is an individual and they're casting ballots. Now, biblically, a rod is kind of like your lineage, your family line, or a tribe of individuals. And so you think, a family, they must all be voting together. But if you look in the hands of the men, each of them has an individual ballot, and there are yeses and nos scattered throughout. And I think it's a beautiful commentary on the power of your vote and your personal choice, despite what those around you might think, making your voice and your thoughts heard. One of the best places to see his work is in churches, both in this area, in the state of Louisiana, but also around the country, particularly where he went to school. So up around Chicago and in Tennessee as well. But in Louisiana, it's of course concentrated in Baton Rouge with a few public monuments in Shreveport and Ruston and New Orleans. But for Frank Hayden, he's in Baton Rouge and particularly he's on Southern's campus. Southern University has over a dozen works of him, either public monuments or smaller pieces that are kept in university buildings, the library or other buildings out there. The two works that Frank Hayden created for downtown Baton Rouge in relation to the 1976 bicentennial are the head of Oliver Pollock and the Marche de Galvez Relief Fountain, both of which are located just off of the North Boulevard Town Square. On Southern University's campus, there are two more sculptures that commemorate the bicentennial, the Red Stick, and the other is Pelican, each of which are on the bluff at Southern University's campus. Frank Hayden was good friends with Adelaide Brent, the first director at LASM, which was then LASC, the Louisiana Art and Science Center. And Frank and Adelaide, in addition to being friends, were both Catholics, and that de devotion to their faith bound them in this additional way. Adelaide was able to promote Frank Hayden in Baton Rouge for these public commissions. Frank Hayden was, of course, more than capable, a very talented artist, but at the time, a person of color would have had more difficulty securing these commissions without assistance. So Adelaide deserves a lot of credit for Frank Hayden's work being scattered throughout Baton Rouge. One of the most striking things about Frank Hayden's work for me is his use of text, how he incorporated text into many of his works and in different styles. Sometimes it was very straightforward lettering, but often it was with a special, I'll call it a font, that he created. And this font was blocky and had letters that nested into one another. An A could sit in the hump of an H or a B could sit on top of an N to make these puzzles which in addition to showing the artist's hand, and you can feel his words, the intentions he had, they also make you slow down and realize what he was saying. So many times with an artist, a work is unveiled or it's shown in a gallery, and there's an opening reception, and then it's forgotten. And if no one wrote about it, you don't know what the artist was saying. But with Frank Hayden, he took the time to say what he wanted to say on these sculptures. And I love that he's invited you to take time and to read and to pay attention to what he was trying to say. In an effort to show unity and to show the humanistic concerns that 
connect us all. You often see repetitions of families. You see repetitions of hands and faces. And this repetition and connectivity really speaks to Hayden's belief that mankind is one. Frank Hayden was born in Memphis, Tennessee and raised by his mother and lost his father when he was just five years old. She left his mother to raise him and his sister by herself. She was a school teacher and placed great importance on education and as a result really instilled those values in the children and enrolled them in Catholic school. They were a devout Roman Catholic family and it was the nuns who nurtured Frank Hayden's art production, noticed that talent when he was a young boy and helped him to fulfill his dream of studying art at university. They helped him apply and he got a scholarship to Xavier University thanks to the nuns. Xavier University, of course, is a Catholic university for people of color. He was able to be taken under the wing of Sister Mary Lorena Neely. I made a decision somewhere, I think, in sophomore year through the aid of a very good, uh, inspiring teacher. She was uh, a nun and an artist and every bit of both. And through her encouragement and advice, I decided to major in art. And I felt that and feel now that that was the uh, most vital decision because had I not done, done so, I would have been miserable. I would have been being an artist as an advocation rather than a vocation. So uh, making that decision uh, brought two things to bear. It, uh, it also was a commitment to art, but uh, it was a commitment to uh, the realization that uh, I'd never have a lot of money. And uh, I guess one has to uh, make that type of uh, commitment very early, whether he wants to chase the dollar or whether he wants to try to fulfill uh, his vocation. Sister Neely worked with her students to, with what she called the Guild. And the Guild provided students opportunities to work with public commissions for national and local regional art projects, giving them this experience. And thanks to Sister Neely, Hayden received his first public commission for a church in 1957 in Chicago before he graduated. After graduating from Xavier University, Frank Hayden had his choice of graduate schools. He had received scholarships to 10 universities, and he chose to attend Notre Dame University and study under Ivan Mestrovic, who was an internationally renowned sculptor of religious and public art. Under Mestrovic, Hayden was able to learn how to work with wood, how to work in stone, and very importantly, how to work in cast bronze, which was an ancient technique that Mestrovic specialized in. On the Mestrovic, uh, I was able to see a man at work who uh, was uh, not only a leader of his country, but uh, uh, a man sensitive to uh, uh, art, to humanity, to uh, a commitment to, a uh, total commitment to um, creativity. And uh, I had never seen that uh, before in its purity. Uh, a man in his waning years, uh, in his uh, 70s, who could uh, outwork all of us put together, who could pick up a chisel or uh, take a pencil and record directly uh, and make significant statements with no struggle of, uh, with materials or techniques. So this was uh, extremely uh, vital to my growth. Uh, it, it developed in me uh, a reverence for all materials. Uh, it developed in me the discipline of work to be able to uh, work uh, all day and half the night in search of some type of significant statement of material. Um, it became second nature to me after a time and uh, it's, uh, it produces a type of 
delicious type of mental and physical fatigue which uh, I enjoy and perhaps that's part of my enjoyment in sculpture in that uh, not only is it uh, very mental in terms of searching out uh, one's content trying to make a, an expression but uh, the physical aspects of it is uh, it's rough, it's rigorous. You have to hit, you have to lift, you have to move, you have to cut, you have to carve. So um, I like the total involvement of self. With Mestrovic, Hayden found a mentor, studied under him in the studio, worked with him on commissions. In fact, Mestrovic was working on the crucifix at St. Joseph's Cathedral just downtown. And when Mestrovic passed, in the middle of the commission, Hayden took over and completed that work for his mentor. After graduation, Frank Hayden took a brief job at Iowa University, which he only kept for about six months before he received a Fulbright scholarship. With the Fulbright Fellowship, Frank Hayden was able to study under Heinrich Kirchner at the Arts Academy in Munich. And there he found a fellow Catholic, a fellow passionate religious figure, and Kirchner worked in cast bronze as well, like Mestrovic had done. And it was a hard subject to study. It was a very complicated process, and not many people specialized in it. Under Kirchner, Hayden became professional at producing these lost wax sculptures, which involves making a plaster positive making a mold of a negative, replacing it with wax, and finally replacing it with bronze, burning out the wax with molten bronze to get your final sculpture. The complicated process was not frequently used, but when you look around Baton Rouge, you see stunning works by Frank Hayden in this lost wax for all of his public monuments. Hayden worked at Southern University for 27 years, and in that time, worked with many, many art students, and he was promoting young artists and supporting them to follow their dreams and to follow their chosen career path and teaching them how to get their art into the public, how to overcome the obstacles that they might have been facing, and really just offering um, a nurturing environment. His environment, which we were part of, is really what made him produce those beautiful things. And uh, it's a simplistic thing that came out of his work, but yet we could feel, and uh, uh, maybe that was something to remind us that we were all vulnerable in a way. And we are. And then he saw that and was able to say that, but he got that from looking at our faces and watching a fellow man struggle every day. And I think if there's one theme that he'd always try to remember or remind us that, remember, we are just people, we are basic, and we need, let's not get carried away with the larger dreams. Remember that the kids must grow up, they must be cared for so that they can bloom. And that was his basic theme, I feel.